I'm just going to cover by way of introduction um, a few things because there are some people here today who've been in, involved in a long process that we've been going through over the last year or so. Some people have come to it more recently and some people might not know much about it at all. So I just wanted to bring everyone to the same sort of um, stage. Today is going to be highly participative. You will be doing a lot of sharing of your experience and expertise, um, but this, this is just information to get us going. So, in terms of the context that we're working in, um, nationally, obviously, the context is um, that the recession is causing um, kind of public sector budgets to shrink, and localism is a particular, um, particularly important context for this work, um, particularly the, the government's localism act that came into legislation, um, well, kind of passed through um, law in, in December and came into force from April this year. And um, there was lots in relation to that that we've been, been looking at in Dudley, which I'll, I'll cover in a moment. Um, and then in terms of transformation, services are being encouraged to change quite radically. And some local authorities in some places have talked about becoming commissioning councils. Some have been talking about becoming enabling councils. So some of this is, a, is about sort of thinking through um, what some of that means, not necessarily using that language, if you like. What we're calling it in Dudley, what we've been looking at, is a changing relationship between the council and other public sector agencies and our communities, the groups in them, the voluntary organisations, the social enterprises, the faith groups, and citizens, um, people, people who live and work here. Um, so just to give you um, a sense of what this work is rooted in, um, we started a project last year with Nick Bird, who's over here, can you give us a wave? Um, and some of his colleagues from Urban Forum. And we wanted to talk to communities who don't traditionally take power to explore what some of the community rights, as they're called, which were being um, kind of discussed in the local bill as it was then. What, what did they mean for communities? Um, and, and how might communities use them? So we surveyed um, the local community and voluntary sector in Dudley. No one else was doing this. It's a unique project. Um, we ran focus groups, which involved, I think, about uh, oh, 33 people. I've got a banner over there that shows um, the sort of um, process that we went through for community rights. We found, in terms of the, the community rights, as they were, um, there wasn't necessarily a huge appetite for communities to do things like take over public services, build things, buy buildings, although there is some interest in some of that, but it's by no means wholesale across the sector. But there was a huge amount of interest from the groups that we talked to about working differently with the council and other public sector agencies. So we then moved into a phase of action research with a group of people, some of whom are here today, Mark and Wendy and others, who we worked with on exploring some of this and then came together with some of the, the senior decision makers from Dudley Council, the chief exec, the directors, to talk about ways that perhaps we could go forward and work differently. Um, and that was, it was through that work that this idea of MASH, as we're calling it, came from. Um, so Nick was reflecting back <coughs> to the group that what he heard them talking about and the struggles that people had and the ideas that they had were around thinking about assets that we have, and they might be things like buildings or money, they might be our skills, they might be our relationships. How do we work with those assets and our services that we're all trying to deliver? some community groups it might be more activities than services but you get that, that idea how do we work and kind of manage those in a holistic way so that we're not constantly separating things out and chunking them out so that they don't relate to each other so that's where kind of where today is rooted and what we've been doing is kind of developing an approach as we go that's trying to take account of what's known as whole systems. And I'm not going to go into this because I'm by no means an expert on this. There are some people working with us who, who've done a lot of um, learning around systems. But we have given you um, a handout um, that you can take that's called Using Whole Systems Approaches. And that's some information that we use with some teams of people um, from voluntary organisations and different council departments that we sort of did a briefing with and almost kind of trained to carry out what we call appreciative interviews. And we've been out and we've talked to, I haven't even counted the list, but on your other handout, information from Ash 
to the participants. There's a list at the back of, um, it's on the very back page, I think it's over 30 people that we've spoken to. We were trying to, to address the balance that we've done a lot of talking to community groups and we hadn't heard necessary perspectives of council officers in all this so much. And we wanted to talk to everyone from the top to the front line. Um, this paper was also got, which might, you might find useful later on today, um, in it, some of the um, kind of ideas and issues that came from those earlier discussions with communities that kind of where everything that we're talking about today has come from. So you've got, you've got those things framed as the, um, examples of what we're trying to address. And in terms of the interviews, we've been carrying those out over the last month. It's been frantic. Um, we gave ourselves quite a short um, time scale. Um, but we've all done really well. We really appreciate the people that have given their time. We've tried to reflect back in this handout just some of the broad things that have come out. And I think the thing that we really wanted to feed back to you was that we've heard the same issues and concerns being expressed by both people in community groups, in voluntary organisations and in council teams and departments. You're saying the same things basically. So that feeling that you're kind of in, in two different places, um, it, it, it doesn't feel like that when we hear these things. Um, and you also all have some really good examples of where you've worked together really well. So we know we can build on, on experiences that are good and what really works. Um, and we've put some, some of the little quotes and, and things that we've heard. So I don't know who said this, someone said, the community wants facilitators, not nannies. Um, we heard a lot about building trust um, and respect and sort of working with each other in, in honest ways. We will be producing something more full that, that reflects back um, that month worth of, of appreciative interview um, and, and get that out in the summer. So we're taking these approaches, thinking about whole systems, appreciative inquiry, and today is going to be a bit focus on kind of how we learn and reflect together. So today the emphasis is about working collaboratively, nurturing our assets, so those things I mentioned, they're not necessarily just money or buildings, they're lots of things. Being creative, and we want to think about how we can, this changing relationship means to be doing something a bit differently, and the way that I think about this is, is kind of moving into and navigating ourselves in new spaces. And I'll just share this, because it's, it's the most helpful thing I've come across in thinking about this. Um, Eileen Pond, who's a community activist in London and used to work in the public sector in, in, in the council, um, has written a paper on community engagement. And it's really nice to read, it's not too long. But this diagram is a systems way of, of showing that in, ex, in kind of public agencies, agencies external to communities, and in this I'd include my own as a, a kind of a voluntary sector organisation, the large voluntary organisations that sit there. We have vertical hierarchical systems of relationships um, which kind of influence the ways that things get done. Residents and activists in communities have what she calls horizontal peer relationships and it's almost kind of more like energy waves than kind of silos and boxes and structures and charts with lines on, you know, it's, it's more, much more fluid. And she talks about the space of possibilities where we might be able to meet and work in different ways together. So for me, if anything, by the end of today, what I'd love is that we start to occupy this space and find ways to support each other to do that and not do, not fall back into, well, this is a council project, we want a community representative, because that sucks the community representative up into the blue bit. We don't want it to fall back to, oh, well, we haven't got any budget to do that, so we'll see if the community get on and do it, because that just drops it back into that green bit. It's how can we work in that space on some things that feel realistic, to us that we can invest in. Does that make sense? Yeah? I'll, I'll send you a link to the paper after this session. Um, so the way that we're framing everything we do today is around three outcomes that we've been doing this research around and that came from the issues and ideas identified in that first community rights piece of work. We've kind of grouped them together. We, we did have nine ideas that we looked at at the MASH launch event in April. Some of you were here for that. And you told us, these are all interconnected, they all relate to each other, we can't leave any of them behind, even though some might be easier to do than others. Um, so we sort of group them. Um, so, and what we've been doing interviews around are these things. So, how can we use our collaboration and the way we engage with each other to creatively use our assets, to 
achieve sustainable permissioning decisions and service change and develop informed and influential people, whether those people are us when we're in our jobs in the council and in the voluntary <coughs> sector or us kind of citizens and people in communities. Okay, so everything we do today is around that. I'm going to hand over to Jill next, over she, she's here. Thanks, Jill. Shall I plug you in? Yes, please. Hello, hi, um, I'm Jill and this is my colleague Sam. Um,